Welcome back to Anime Capper. Today's movie is the 1997 psychological thriller movie, Perfect Blue. We start off watching a Powertron presentation at a convention, and the crowd outside seems to be waiting to see a performance by the singing idol group Sham. Everyone seems to be talking about Mima, and word is that Mima is making a big announcement during the show. Backstage, the girls are getting ready, and Mima is really feeling the pressure. Soon, a man comes back and tells them that it's their time to go on stage. Chan goes out there and gives the crowd a performance to remember. During the performance, we see flashes of Mima's agents talking about whether she should be an actress or a singer. And then, Mima takes the time to announce that this will be her last show with the group. During her speech, some ruffians start causing a stir in the back, but an obsessive security guard manages to scare them off. After Mima performs her final song as part of the group, she passes by all of her adoring fans that don't want her to quit, and one of them even gives her a love letter. When she gets home, she finally gets to relax, and she opens up her fan mail. The letter from the fan says that he is watching her through her window, but before she can really tell what it means, she gets a call from her mom. When she gets a call on the other line, she ends up simply hearing heavy breathing on the line. Then she gets a fax with the word traitor plastered all over it. The next day, Mima heads to the set of the drama she's going to act in, and she shows her agent the fan letter. The agent thinks that it's just talking about a sort of chat room online. When it's time for Mima to shoot her scene, she starts to get really nervous from all the bystanders at the studio. Just then, the producer, Mr. Tejima, and the writer, Mr. Shibuya, arrive and they bring around the fan mail that was sent to the studio. Mima's agents try to tell the writer that Mima should be utilized more, and Mr. Tejima gives him Mima's fan letter. When he goes to open it, it winds up exploding in his hand. The agent is rushed to the hospital, and Mima goes home with Rumi. Rumi tells her that he wasn't hurt badly, and it was probably meant to be a prank. Rumi sets up her computer, and Mima heads to the website that the fan spoke of in the letter. It turns out that someone has made a diary based off of Mima, but the entries are actually true and talk about very private instances. The next time she gets off the subway, she bolts up the stairs just in case someone is following her. When Mima gets to the agency, she brushes past the paparazzi and finds a news article in the elevator that talks about how the ruffian from the concert was in a hit-and-run accident. When she looks back out at the paparazzi, she notices the obsessed security guard standing there watching her. When she gets in the office, Rumi gives her her new script, which has a few new lines, but they soon realize that Mr. Shibuya has written in a rape scene for Mima's character. Rumi isn't too happy about the changes, but her other agent tries to convince the others that this is exactly what Mima needs to break out into acting. Mima tells them that she'll do it, but later, she starts to feel the conflict inside herself of doing such a scene. The next day, Mima goes to the set to film the rape scene, and she seems to lose herself during filming. She remembers how it felt to be the famous pop idol standing in front of all of her adoring fans, but when filming is done for the day, Mima goes to the agent's car. She notices that Rumi isn't there anymore, and her agent drives her home. When she gets home, she finds that her fish are dead, and she throws a fit until she finally crashes on the bed. She screams that she obviously didn't want to do the scene, but she wasn't about to cause any problems for anyone. Later, she goes on the diary page, and she sees that they are saying that she doesn't want to act like this anymore. Suddenly, Mima sees her pop idol self on the computer, and she says that she's the one that's really writing it. She wants them to go back to being the pop idol that they were before. Idol Mima tells her that they can never go back to that and Mima watches as idle Mima comes out and hops away on the streetlights. Meanwhile, someone is playing tricks with Mr. Shibuya in his parking garage, and he winds up getting his eyes gouged out and stabbed in the elevator of his apartment. The next day, Mima talks to her agent about how she thinks that murder might be related to the letter bomb she got earlier. Later, Mima goes for her professional photo shoot, and she winds up stripping for the photographer. When she goes to the set for her scenes, she is hesitant and stays in the changing room. While her agent tries to get her out, she has a private conversation with idol Mima. That evening, Mima goes home and soaks in the bathtub as she curses the crew members. 
The next day, the stalker security guard notices people buying the magazine that has Mima's topless pictures, and he buys up every copy of the issue. When he gets home, he updates Mima's diary, and he declares that the new Mima is an imposter one. He says that he'll get rid of her to keep Mima's image safe. Later, Mima goes with her agent to visit her old singing group friends, but she spots idol Mima sitting with them. She chases after idol Mima until she finally runs right into traffic. Just then, the stalker runs into her with his van, but Mima ends up waking up and realizes that it was all just a bad dream. Later, she has a run-in with the stalker on set, and she wakes up from bed again. Then she calls Rumi over, and she starts really contemplating what's real or an illusion. One night, the photographer orders pizza, but when the pizza man shows up, he stabs the photographer over and over. Eventually, the hat comes off, and it turns out to be Mima. Suddenly, she wakes up the next morning, and her agent calls to check on her. He has her turn the news on, and she sees that the photographer really was murdered. When she goes to her closet to check on things, she finds bloody clothes that match the ones from the murder. Somehow, Mima pushes through all the paparazzi outside her door, and she goes to the set to work on a murder scene. When she's played by visions of the photographer, she seems to pass out, and she wakes up in her bed. At work, it turns out that the scenes in the drama directly reflect what's really happening, and they finish up the final take. Everyone celebrates, but Mima seems to be overexhausted and still in character. When she goes to change, she notices the stalker walking towards her. Down in the parking garage, Mima's agent tells Rumi about a big movie role Mima landed thanks to this performance, and he asks her to take Mima home. What they don't know is that Mima is being attacked by the stalker. Mima asks him why he's attacking her, and he tells her that he knows that she's an imposter. He gets ready to really rape her on the stage, but she manages to kick him off of her. He eventually grabs her backstage, and he throws her around until she gets the upper hand and hits him in the temple with a hammer. He stumbles for a moment, and he eventually falls down dead. Just then, the lights come on, and the crew applaud her performance. Rumi goes looking for her, and she finds her in the hallway busted and bruised. Mima tells her what happened, and she takes her to the stage. When she does, she notices that the stalker is gone. Rumi takes Mima home, and in the morning, she wakes up to find that she's in a bedroom, but it isn't her room. Suddenly, idol Mima shows up, and Mima sees that the reflection is actually Rumi. Apparently, Rumi has been trying to relive her glory days as an idol by using Mima. She even hired the stalker to kill her when she swayed from the path she wanted her to take. Rumi attacks Mima, but they wind up chasing each other across the rooftops. Rumi winds up stabbing Mima with an umbrella, but in the end, Rumi ends up getting impaled by broken glass. After some time, we see that Rumi is in a psychiatric hospital, and Mima visits her when she can. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more, and comment what you think I should do next. Thank you.